Thank you, Madam, for your kind introduction. I'll be discussing about fine tuning risk assessment and risk reduction lifestyle, mainly focusing on exercises and diet. So, coming to the fine tuning of the risk assessment first. In USA, in a study published in 2019, it shows that the obesity related cancers, the incidence of these are increasing in the young age population in US population more so in pancreas as you can see from here uh, is in thyroid in kidney cancer in multiple myeloma and so on but in breast cancer the incidence across the age groups have been stable but this is not the case while coming to the asia pacific population this is a study by renehan et al which shows that they have seen a stronger association in Asia Pacific population between increase in BMI and its relation of increasing in breast cancer, both in patients of premenopausal and postmenopausal age group. Now, coming to a study by Rohan et al., which measured uh, the measures of body fat and its relation with breast cancer incidence in particularly in postmenopausal women. They used two methods. One was the dual X-ray energy absorptiometry based methods, which measured the whole body fat mass, the whole body percent fat, and the fat mass of the trunk. All of these three parameters and some other parameters correlated well with the increase in risk of breast cancer. Similarly, the commonly used anthropometric measures like body mass index, the waist circumference, and waist hip ratio. These all commonly used parameters also correlated well with the increase in risk of the breast cancer uh, in postmenopausal age group. So, how does it happen basically? With the increase in uh, adipose tissue in the body and hyperadiposity, the macrophage uh, gets accumulated. Uh, in the vicinity and they lead, they lead to an inflammatory condition. By the inflammatory mediators, they can uh, activate the aromatase and they in turn uh, increase the conversion of androgen to estrogen, which is the main source of estrogen in the postmenopausal age group. Apart from this mechanism, there are some other mechanisms like uh, the effects on the glucose metabolism by increasing insulin and insulin, like uh, insulin growth factor one, and others uh, which increase in the cancer cells. In the breast, it is called as white adipose tissue inflammation and it is mainly seen by this crown-like structures in the histopathology, which, is, which, which are basically the accumulation of the microphage around the adipocytes in the humor uh, HE stain, it can be seen, and more so in the anti CD68 immunohistostaining, it, it can be seen more clearly. So, now coming to the uh, in 2017, which compared the evidence of adipose tissue inflammation in benign breast disease uh, cohort and compared those benign breast disease patients who did not progress to have malignant cancer and as compared to those patients who were who progressed to have malignant breast uh, cancer so among the benign breast disease biopsy a high crown like structure count of more than 5 was seen more in patients who progressed to uh, have malignant breast cancer rather than those who didn't have this count and it remained significant when they were uh, when the factors like adipose tissue area the histopathological impression and the body mass index was taken into account so the high crown like structure densities are an independently associated with an increased breast cancer risk and they may be a promising histological marker of breast cancer risk in patients having having benign breast diseases this breast tissue this adipose tissue inflammation can have an uh, effect on the breast cancer outcome also according to this publication by Yangar et al in 2015 in univariate analysis also in, in univariate analysis the 
these patients who were having the crown like structures were having a median distance distant relapse free survival of around 20 months as compared to those patients who didn't have this adipose tissue inflammation of 26 months and this remains significant also in the multivariate model among the obese patients some of these may have uh, may have healthy metabolism and those patients who are having health a normal bmi may also have metabolic obesity this can be seen and uh, the breast white adipose tissue inflammation occurs in approximately one third of the women with normal body mass index now coming to the normal weight hyperadiposity and postmenopausal breast cancer risk in this study published in jama oncology in 2018 this study taken in, take uh, took into account the dxa measurements of whole body fat mass whole body fat percentage and fat mass of the trunk and it showed that a 5 unit increase in the whole body fat mass was associated with 28% increase in the risk of invasive breast cancer similarly a 5 unit increase in the whole body fat was associated with with 19% increase in the risk of invasive breast cancer and 5 unit increase in the trunk fat mass was associated with around 46% increase in the risk of metabolic uh, in risk of invasive breast cancer now coming to the risk reduction strategies this was a, the guideline published in 2018 by world cancer research fund and american institute for cancer research they took into account around 10 factors seven of them were uh, like modifiable factors and three of them were uh, not so uh, the uh, to name of uh, to name them to have the normal healthy weight is important factor to be physically active to eat a rich diet with the plant based products limit the consumption of fast food limit the consumption of processed and red meat limit the consumption of the sugar and sweetened drink uh, and limit consumption of alcohol these seven were the modifiable factors apart from them the not using supplement for cancer prevention breastfeeding the baby and uh, following uh, recommendations after diagnosis was also important to reduce the cancer risk sams white et al published a, a proposed a adherence score in their publication in 2019 uh, giving one uh, maximum score of 1 to the seven modifiable factors and if we include the best feeding then the uh, total score increases to 8 the maximum score increases to 8 so this prospective scoring can be <coughs> used in the population based study to assess the adherence to this recommendations apart from this in this study in this meta analysis of 38 studies including more than 1 lakh breast cancer patient by pjo et al in 2016 they included the studies across the globe uh, published from 1987 to 2014 and as per this study increased level of physical activity led to reduction in the risk of breast cancer irrespective of the type of physical activity the amount of physical activity the it was in um, it was seen across the globe and irrespective of the adiposity irrespective of the menopausal status and the hormonal receptor status of the tumors and the breast cancer risk seemed to decline with the increasing physical activity without any threshold effect though this benefit from the physical activity was not evident in patients who had ever used hormone replacement therapy during their lifetime now coming to the uh, diet recommendations in particular by uh, in this article by baden et al in 2019 they divided the plant based diet into two main groups one is healthful and unhealthful the healthful plant based diet they included the non non processed whole grains vegetables rich in fibers and fruits and unhealthful plant products included uh, that processed food uh, the sweetened drinks fruit juices etc and according to this article there was a definite 
increase in the uh, inflammatory markers when there was an increase in intake in unhealthful plant based diet index as can be seen from this increase in the leptin the crp the il6 the leptin free index etc and uh, and correspondingly decrease in this in these inflammatory markers when we take the healthful plant based diet and increase in the adiponectin level also so to conclude we should be aiming to maintain optimal body fat and lean mass ratio simple anthropometric measures are good enough to detect the body fat encourage healthy plant based eating patterns rather than specific diets as of now until further clarity emerges on this physical activity of any type reduces the breast cancer risk in all the age group across all population and population based lifestyle modification and healthy lifestyle promotion programs are needed to increase awareness among public in general thank you